If you have concerns about your online nursing school clinical, don't fret, you found the right video. I'm here to share with you just a few things that you should know to make the most out of this clinical experience. Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm the Danielle Denise and I'm currently an entry level Masters of Science in Nursing student to become a psychiatric and mental health nurse practitioner. I'm currently sharing my journey in my pre-licensure portion to obtain my BSN RN and I just want to share a few tips and tricks about nursing school and my journey and a little bit beyond that just to help those of you out there who want to know a little bit more about programs like mine. If that's something that piques your interest or one of the many other types of videos that I make on my channel interests you, be sure to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss an upload or a giveaway. And now that you know a little bit about me, let's jump back into today's topic. So as I was preparing to wrap up the end of my semester, I came across a comment that said, uh, you guys are still having online nursing school clinical. I just wanted to come on here just to share with you guys just a few things that you might need to know in order to maximize the benefit of having online nursing school clinical. As a few of you guys may know from my last video, I am back in the hospital setting and to go back and think about what I did in my online simulations, um, I just feel like there are just a few key things that you could take away from the online simulations that apply in the physical clinical setting. Of course, it's not the same, not the same experience as prioritizing multiple patients or having real genuine face-to-face -face interaction with patients, nurses, doctors, and all of that. But whether this is your first time having a clinical experience at all, or you have been taken away from the clinical setting, here are just a few things you should know if online simulations are new to you. So a couple of the virtual simulations that you might come across are vSIM, or my school uses Kaplan's iHuman. So the first tip I want you guys to know about is really focusing on your patient's admitting diagnosis and patient history. You wanna make sure that you are making yourself familiar with this diagnosis. This will give you the chance to really see how what you're studying is applied in the patient care setting. And sometimes by the time you're working or you're in the hospital setting, you will come across a patient with something that you have never heard of before. Um, and that's common, like there's so much to know about the human body and there's so much to study that we probably can't even fit it all into our schooling. But that's why this career is a lifelong learning profession. Um, this also applies when you're looking back at family history, any previous diagnosis and how that has led to their current diagnosis. That is something that you'll see in the clinical setting. For your virtual sims, it's important for how your plan of care will go with your virtual patient. Next, something that's really important is checking your orders. Now, on the virtual side, I mean, yes, you have to check your orders because, I don't know, it's kind of like a video game and you have to get that done or that's what really applies. But looking at those and all of the orders that they actually like lay out for you in these virtual simulations, they try to make it similar to what you're actually going to see in your patient care setting. So when you're looking at it in the virtual simulation, it's really important to expose yourself to that because it's really important in the clinical patient setting because that's your job. Your job as a nurse is to execute the doctor's orders. In the patient care setting, you'll be looking to check your orders first thing in the morning as you're looking at your patient care history after you get report and all of that. You'll need to look at those because that's how your day will pan out is based on those orders. Equally as important, you want to check the MAR or MAR. This is where you find your patient's medications. These are really important in the clinical setting as well because you wanna understand the medications you're giving out during med passing. Um, it's really important, I'm looking at medications when I'm on the clinical floor, so it's great to do it while you're in your virtual setting as well, if there's ever a medication that you're unfamiliar with. Um, typically, they gave us things that we should know, but just in case, you really wanna know the adverse effects and what you're gonna do if you see these happen in real life. So both in your patient care setting on virtual sims and in the real ho real deal hospital setting. These are very important. Whether you've taken pharmacology or not, it's a really great way to start familiarizing yourself with these medications so that the more you see them, the more they'll 
you'll be able to quickly recall these medications in the future. At the end of Kaplan's Eye Human, they also give you a condensed list of the same medications and what you should know about them. So you can wait again at the end and go back and look at them, or even while you're working with your patient virtually, you can sneak and check them out, even though I don't think you should. But in real life, I actually look up medications while I'm on the floor, or I use up to date when I go to the computer to chart and stuff, so I guess if, if your school permits, look up the medications. That's what you do in real life. Next up, vital signs. Now on Kaplan's Eye Human, there's going to be a person huffing and puffing. Literally, they're making it very evident that you can hear their, this person's respirations. But after you listen to that, mute it. Anywho, vital signs on there are important and the way that they set it up is so that you know what's important to check on your patient based on their admitting diagnosis. For vitals in the virtual setting, they really set it up so that you make sure that you're only checking what you need. And this is what you need to do in the hospital setting too, because in real life, you won't have time to do a full head to toe assessment as you're familiar with in um, health assessment class. So for example, if your patient is in for a respiratory illness, you wanna make sure that you're listening to the lungs, percussing. I don't really percuss in real life anymore, but I love to do it. I think it's my my best skill, but you wanna make sure that you're focusing on the respiratory section. If your patient is in there for a GI problem, you wanna make sure that you're listening to the gut, that you're you're percussing the abdomen. I, I really do that in real life. Um, you wanna make sure that you're doing those things and focusing on the major assessments for your patient's admitting diagnosis. And that's the way that they try to get you to focus on your virtual sim because that is similar to how it should apply in real life. You're still gonna do a full head to toe in real life, like you can, um, but you really wanna focus on those key areas that apply to your patient's diagnosis. A little random thing about like how these online virtual simulations kind of grade you or um, assess you as a nurse, don't beat yourself up about anything if you miss something or you um, get something wrong. Real life, you're trying not to mess up. Virtual simulation is a place for you to mess up and there's no real patient harmed. So don't beat yourself up over not prioritizing actions correctly. There are times where I'd select correct actions to do, but I did them in the wrong place or something like that. Like I put them in the wrong category for selections. That's like not pertaining to vital signs, but in like things that you should focus on. So don't beat yourself up over that. It's a learning opportunity. Um, take it with a grain of salt, just learn from it. And if you're like me and, you're select, and you select something, but you put it in the wrong category or box, in real life, I would do the right thing for the patient. But in virtual sim, because I didn't put it in whatever categories they have, <sighs> lastly, I really wanna talk about what I benefited most from, which is practicing S-bars. Um, I'll be sure to include a link down below of the S-Bar tool that my tutor shared with me that really helped me along this process. They make sure that it is an exercise for you because these S-Bars are your in-between uh, shift reports, your reports between nurses, and your reports with doctors and other healthcare professionals. Um, they really help you uh, communicate what you need to get across about your patient to another professional working with your patient as well. I got a lot of practice working with my virtual patients and they make it an exercise, at least for Kaplan Eye Human, for you to work on an S-bar and then you get to compare it with what Kaplan would have said. Um, with Kaplan, I there became a point of me just practicing whether I was gonna talk to the nurse or the doctor. I can't even remember if Kaplan told me who they wanted me to talk to, but I would just practice what I needed and I'd go back and run over it with a classmate or a clinical instructor. You can do that as well. I really got a lot of practice understanding what I should include or omit in an SVAR as to what's really important and pertinent information for my patient and based on who they're seeing. Like for example, if I'm giving this S-bar to a respiratory therapist, I'm not gonna include 
a whole bunch of other stuff that they don't really need especially not like labs that aren't pertinent if i'm giving this to the doctor i'm including those labs i'm including the assessment that i did because they're going to want to know and they're going to ask you questions if there's anything you've left out you can go back in and fill them in on it if it's your nurse or another nurse between shift changes you want to be sure that you're really tailoring these s bars to the person that you're going to speak to and my virtual simulation patients really gave me that opportunity to practice that so really take advantage of that because in real life you might be pressed for time in order to get your s bar together um, but with your virtual patient you can go back in later look at your patient again and try to fill one out one more time or you can really take the time as you're um, working on your virtual patient to really fill out your s bar and do the best that you can so that's it really those are the tips that i have to really make the most out of these virtual clinical experiences i know it's not what you might want or what you might have been expecting but honestly you gotta make do with what you got because honestly it could be no clinical and then you're pushed back because that's what has happened to a few people so you know i'm not going to tell you to be grateful but i will suggest it <laughs> and i just hope that these tips are things that will help you make the most out of this experience. I know it's different. I know it's not what you want. I know you want to feel that feeling of being a student nurse and being active and working with patients. As nerve wracking as it is, it's an excellent opportunity. And so is your virtual simulation. Um, sometimes it's annoying, but sometimes I look at it as a video game. Like I just have fun. I literally used to pay, play surgery games when I was a kid. So. It reminded me of that but yeah if you guys enjoyed this video or you found it helpful be sure to give me a thumbs up you know let me know it really helps out my channel a lot and if you want to catch any more tips tricks or anything else that I want to share on my channel and you find interest in it please be sure to subscribe and turn on that notification bell make sure it's turned on to always so that you don't miss an upload or a giveaway I might do another one I don't know um, but I really do appreciate you guys here on my channel I thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time I upload bye